This is Alan T. Triff, and today we're going to be playing Secret of Evermore, an action-adventure game on the Super Nintendo, which was the only thing ever put out by Squaresoft of USA. I know, I thought Mystic Quest was them too, but nope. Okay, first we need to choose a name. I think we'll go with our old standby, Bobbert. But a little bit about the game. This is, like I said before, an action-adventure game, similar in style to Secret of Mana. And at the time, a lot of us thought this was the secret sequel to Secret of Mana. As you know, or may or may not know, Saikon Densetsu 3 never made it to America. And as such, eh, I mean, we may not have appreciated this game as much as we should have. Then we start in a nice little flashback. You can tell because there's no color, and as everybody knows, the past had no color in it. I guess we're waiting for the game to slowly start. Uh, this game is very similar to Secret of Mana, despite not being a true sequel to it. But it does have several notable differences. We'll get into some of these later. Most obvious is the more modern aesthetic right now, at least. And overall, I would describe the story as more science fiction-y than fantasy. Though fantasy plays a part. Oh, I'm talking over the dialogue. Well, text. And in keeping with the Elster's theory that the end of the world is going to be preceded by somebody saying, Oops! Okay, now we're in the quote-unquote present. Again, you can tell because there's color, and as everybody knows, color only came about in the 80s. Oh, and we have our hero here. You seem like the sort of extreme guy. He looks very much like Marty McFly. He even looks like he has the, um... The life jacket vest thing going on. Though he's blonde. I always gave him like a surfer. I always thought he spoke like a surfer voice. You're like, whoa, dude! The door is open! I better take a look inside. <laughs> yeah, the old days where you could just wander into an abandoned mansion. Yeah, nice little squish. That squish down effect reminds me very much of, um... Oh, it was that Dreamcast survival horror game. Uh, the Ring. Which... Somehow had something to do with the Ring movie. I, I don't get it much myself. That always struck me as a situation where they sort of forced in the license. Nope, oh, here we go. Wow! It looks just like the PZS plasma drive and when consonants collide. I wonder if it works. Just go touch it, you idiot. Yeah, there we go. Oops again. We should get out of here before something goes terribly wrong. <laughs> As opposed to... And there he goes. Oh, and you get a quick glimpse there of different forms your dog is going to take. And, of course, we get pulled into. And here's a certain someone who's certainly not evil. So I will give him a certainly not evil voice. What have we here? An intruder, I fear! That was some blast! Whoa! Podacious! Who are you? That's not important. We've got to get you out of here. We can't have you meddling with the professor's experiments. Come along. Who's that, Cauldron? Do we have a visitor? It's no one. No one at all. Continue with your work, Professor. After you. 
apparently the part of the evil vizier is played by Snape, potions master. Okay, not much to do in here, but just look around. And you find they've given you a bazooka right off the bat. Which is unfortunate because the bazooka, while sounding pretty cool, is not a very good weapon to fight these things. For one thing, they move around too quickly. Uh, as you see, like in Secret of Mana, you need to wait for your little gauge at the bottom of the screen to charge up to 100% for a full shot. Or I should say, in Secret of Mana, that's how you did your strongest uh, hit. You can push it beforehand, just like you can push it beforehand here. But with the bazooka, it doesn't do anything but kind of flail with it, which isn't that useful. It doesn't really do much damage, much like uh, pushing the using a sword in Secret of Mana the same way. Fortunately, you have, I don't think you have unlimited ammo, but you've got enough to take these guys out. Okay. Took care of him. Now, I hope you enjoyed that time with the bazooka, because you aren't going to see it for a long time. Some sort of futuristic escape pod. Oh, god dang. <laughs> I guess we can assume this is a klutz hero. Ah, beautiful. Was it mode 7? The not 3D. I laugh, but at the time, that was so impressive. Was some landing. I think the pod and the bazooka are shot. Of course the bazooka is shot. They can't just let me run around with it. <sighs> well, naturally your dog is missing. Or rather, he's taken on a different form. It's funny because I don't think there's really anything over that far on the screen. Oh, well. He does bring you your first weapon, which is... a bone. Okay, I've started with Earth, I suppose. Anodyne started you off with a broom. Which I guess has length to it. Okay, now some things to know. Your dog can sniff out hidden items in the environment. It's important because magic in this game relies on... well... We'll go into that in a little more detail whenever we get, actually start getting magic, or alchemy as it's called in this game. For now though, you just know you want to pick up as much as you can because you're going to need it. Okay, just like Secret of Mana, you can level up your sword to do charge attacks, where you basically just hold the attack button and after it hits 100%, it fills up a little meter. Unlike Secret of Mana, however, which... Uh, had a level for every one of the mana orbs you picked up, or mana seeds. You know, it's been a long time, I don't remember how that worked, but I remember there were eight, like seven or eight levels. Here, you've only got about, let me see, zero, doesn't count as anything. One, two, three, everything goes up to like level three, including your dogs as hacks. One difference though, is in Secret of Mana, you could upgrade your sword and still keep up the levels you've got. You uh, earned up to that point. In this game, when you get a new weapon, like, I'm using this as a sword type, even though it doesn't cut grass. But when I unlock the second sword later, which I think is a bronze sword, or a gladius, you basically start off at zero again. So, eh. I thought it was kind of annoying at the time, because it's technically still a sword. Why would I suddenly forget how to swing a sword, just because it's a different kind of sword? Okay, this giant pumpkin gourd thing is an obvious chest. These mosquitoes are really annoying, but uh, even their little sound effect is annoying. Fortunately, they can't really do much. They only do like one point of damage. Okay, water, ash... Probably find some roots at some point. You find all sorts of ingredients throughout the game, but a lot of them are kind of area specific. 
here it's there's obviously sort of a prehistoric jungle thing going on here. I think it's going to be limited to ash, water, wax, oil, roots, clay, and I think crystals. Okay, yeah, obviously those plants you need sort of a, you need a sharp weapon to get by. And the bone isn't sharp enough, so let's come back to that. I do recommend going through and exploring as much of this area as you can, because hopefully you can level up. Yeah, right there. The game actually throws a boss fight at you pretty early, which is really easy to lose. Get a few more ingredients. You can actually push the shoulder buttons at any time to make the dog start sniffing. And if you smell if you smell something, he'll start moving towards it. And you, don't, you don't have to keep the button held either. If you smell something, he'll start moving towards it, like sniffing and moving towards it. And he'll keep doing it until he gets to where it, he's as close as he can get to it. One thing to notice, though, is sometimes he'll just start sniffing for no reason, and if you want to make sure he's actually got something, just tap the L and R button. And if he isn't, doesn't have anything, doesn't have anything, he'll stop. Okay, the first boss fight is up ahead. Petals are healing items. We only got one though, so we'll have to be careful. Fortunately, we get our HP back when we leveled up. Now, here's the first boss. It's technically just four raptors. An enemy we'll run into a lot more later on in this level. But for now, they're pretty tough. The trick is to not be in a position to let them jump at you like that. They do a lot of damage, and as you can see, we don't have a lot of HP at this point in the game. Okay. Uh, one interesting thing I should note while we're doing this fight. Secret of Mana let you uh, have multiplayer. You could actually hook up another controller and have someone take on some of the, one of the other characters. You'd think this hat would have the same thing. In fact, I did whenever I first uh, played this as a kid. It does not. However, for those of you who like emulation, they did, someone did release a mod that reintroduces this into the game. Now, from what I understand, the reason they didn't add it in there, even though it seems kind of obvious, is something to do with hardware limitations or how much space they had in the cartridge which ironically turned out to be meaningless as they had to increase that size for the, to make, make room for the whole game okay my dog is down and I'm not doing too good I'm going to go ahead and use my healing item uh, you do get healing items for your dog later okay I don't even see if we've got any of them down yet we got to be getting close, though. You see, what's confused me the first time I played this, there are four of them here. Okay. I should mention that this fight is not necessary, however. You can actually lose it and still be fine. However, there are bonuses to winning. Okay. Oh, there we go. Level three. Oh, still got some more. I'm guessing two, because after you get to when you get down to just one, they stop trying to hide. Oh, fortunately, I just leveled. Oh, dang it, he's gonna kill me. Okay. I should mention when the dog is dead, you can't make him sniff either. And even without the mod, you can push select and take control of the dog temporarily. When he's alive. I can't do it now, of course. It is important later in the game, though, because there's some spots where you need the dog to get through some things. Oh, there we go. 50 talons, the money of this area. There are four main areas in this game. Each of them has their own specialized money. Though I'm told there was once a, once a fifth area a sort of based on the sort of romantic feel. It was all supposed to be flowery and overly sweet, but it got cut from the game. Okay. Obviously, we're going with the caveman aesthetic here. What's well, a caveman? But they actually they're living in huts, so that's a little bit a little more advanced. Okay, good girl with a pet lizard. 
Of course, the real good thing about Finding Town is that, like every adventurer before us, we get to go around looting everything. Except for that. Okay. Yeah, I need to get him. I need to get him revived. Oh yeah, there's a tip. Every every campfire will give you ash. Here we go. Yep, a lot of the houses here have gourds and pots. In fact, someone actually just says they have no problem just sharing with you. And that's good because I'm going to take everything. Oh, more ash. More free stuff. Clay, talons, and more money. One interesting thing of the time, though, is that there's an exchange rate on the money between areas. Naturally, talents, is be, talents are the least valuable. So you go to the next area, even if you have a lot of money here, you end up with like a fourth of the new um, money in the new area. Okay. Oh, okay, in the next door. Ah, uh, see, they don't bind if we take it because they know we're going to have to repay them sooner or later anyway, which is very accurate. Okay. Ah, here we go. Grass vest. Normally you'd have to just buy one, but now we get one for free for killing the raptors, which is very nice. In fact, we should be able to buy some more armor around here somewhere. Ah, uh, yes. Like, just like in Secret of Mana, where you use magic to power it up, here using... Alchemy will also power it up. The difference being, however, in Secret of Mana, you could rest at the end to get your MP back. Here, if you want to cast magic, you gotta have the right components. I'll explain this a bit more when we get to our first spell, which isn't too far off. Right after we finish looting everything. More clay, a biscuit that brings your dog back from the dead. I think you get a spell later that should just make them. Weird stuff, but okay. Okay, there's an entrance here somewhere. Ah, okay. Oh, I should well apologize ahead of time. I can't seem to figure out where I left my pop filter. So, if I'm popping a lot, don't worry, I'll, I'll figure out where it is by next time. If not, I will make up something. Okay, this should be the end. Ah, oh, Nectar. Nectar... You know, come to think of I don't know what Nectar does. I think that'll bring your main character back to life. If he dies. It's expensive, though, so honestly, at this point, if you wanted to sell it... It's understandable. Okay, gonna save our game. Okay, just wanted to do a little check right there. Make sure my pizza isn't burning. Okay. Ever since we got time, let's go ahead and see Fire Eyes, the leader of the village. Unga chaka, unga chaka. And there she is. And her name's Elizabeth. <laughs> Bobbert's my name. As the more astute of you may have noticed, Elizabeth does not look like a cave person. Which is actually very impressive, considering that she's... I think we find out she's been here 30 years. Okay, well, we need a name for the dog. So let's go with, um... Ooh. Let's go with my favorite character cut from the Harry Potter movies. Because why not? Good old Peeves. This is something as a writer myself, and if I ever get fortunate enough to have a book made into a movie, I'm sure they're going to cut somebody I love too. 
Oh, well, let's see. Interesting, she seems to know about Podunk. But, again, in the fine tradition of adventures everywhere, she's not willing to help you until you help her. In particular, she wants her one of her village alchemists back. <sighs> I feel that my character, Bobbert, here kind of ruined that opportunity. He could have thought of a much better... What you call lumberjack pun. Like, I don't know, like... Uh, I'm not good at making puns off the top of my head. Let's cut to the heart of the matter. Yeah, this is pretty bad. Okay. Now, our first spell is basically a fireball. We need two oil and one wax to cast it. And now that we have a spell, this guy over here will sell us stuff. But we don't have to go do it just yet. I remember, is there anything else here I need to pick? I, oh, yeah. Nah, we'll, we'll do it later. For now, let's go ahead and go check out the next combat area. Which is not... Oh, not here. Okay, I need an axe to get through here. Yeah, your axe weapon is the first one that has a blade that you can cut through the grass. And you get it for freeing Strongheart, fortunately, but we need to go get him and free him before we can get it. Okay. Mostly there's the same thing here, the same plants. Bugs, don't have any spell components to cast that. Kind of sad it start, starts you with those because wax and oil are not exactly the cheapest spell components for this part of the game. Okay. This is a good area for uh, grinding though because these guys, a lot of these guys appear. They're worth a good amount of experience, a good place to get a little money. Because the truth is, this game ramps up in difficulty pretty quick. In fact, first time I played this, I wasn't willing to put a little time in the grind here, and the first, sorry, the first real boss, not counting the raptors, he just bloody crucified me just first time. Didn't even have a chance on him. So, I'm going to spend some time leveling up here. I'm going to try to get my bone up to level 2 or 3. Try to get a flash up to level 2 or 3. So I've got some firepower. And basically just level up my characters and get some more money for spell components and equipment. That way, next time when we start, we'll be ready to go. So, I'll see you then.